Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Fitz Rupee Cast. Today we're going to be starting a new series of games here featuring the Elite Mod, and that's of course by Kaltos and his modder crew, the Elite Mod for Dawn of War 2 Retribution. I've had the pleasure of joining in with them on some of their games recently, and I enjoyed it quite a lot myself. So what he's gone and done is he's kind of picked up where Relic left off. Relic's not going to be patching the game anymore to my knowledge. Don't quote me on that, but that's as far as we know they are done with it for now. But he's gone ahead and added some new models, added some completely new units and squads, and just a slew of new balance changes across the board for the game. General, general gameplay mechanic changes, uh, just lots of stuff for every race, and just tons, ton, tons of interesting changes going into this game right now. So I figured we'd just hop right on in headfirst into some kind of hectic, chaotic, three-on-three -three madness right here. I'll be casting, of course, some more, I guess, strategically relevant one-on-one -on -one matches later on as we get further into this, because Kaltos has said he enjoys two-on-two -two and three-on-three, -three, but really the mod he wants to aim to get one-on-one -on -one more balanced and more exciting. So anyways, we have a dazzling array of players here today, and we are, of course, on Argus Desert Gate right here. This three-laned, three-on-three map. So let's go ahead and take a look at our players. We have Mr. Carnivore over here as our Plague Champion for the Chaos Space Marines on the blue team. Then Kaltos himself as the Eldar Warlock. And you can see some of these models, actually. You can notice the differences in them already. And then we have his Eldar companion, Mr. Lindonan, as the Eldar Farseer over here to round out the blue team. Then on the red team, we've got Mr. Bambi Lambie as our bright pink force commander for the Space Marine Army. Then we've got the man, Mr. Bigamo, as our Space Marine Apothecary. You can see he's looking a little fancy too. And Twilily as the Imperial Guard Lord General, looking particularly large and in charge these days with his fancy new hat and cigar right there hanging out of his mouth in the midst of battle. So let's go ahead, get the game started, taking a look around the map. We're gonna have two Space Marines, and an Imperial Guard versus two Eldar and Chaos Space Marines. Of course, being Argus Desert Gate, we've got the three lanes of combat. We've got the resource lane over here on the left side, the western side over here, featuring three power nodes and a couple of uh, wreck points as well. Then in the middle, we've got kind of the VP heavy section. The end game, of course, will be coming down to this center lane to get these central VPs. And then we've got the top lane with the contested VP and natural power and wreck for both teams. So it looks like Twilily is heading straight into the middle with his Lord General, not hesitating to try to get some early map control, not even worrying about his rear points, wants to get a turret up here, a multi-laser turret right there, and then grab this VP for some early VP gain. Meanwhile, blue team Mr. Kaltos heading into center, trying to lock down that central contested power node. Where, uh, whereas red team pushed for the central VP, it looks like blue team's trying to get the power advantage early on. We've got Carnivore over here facing off against Bambi Lambi. That force commander's gonna get in there and start disrupting, charging right against the Chaos Space Marines, grabbing them into some melee. Banshee's coming in to support from the eastern side, coming through that arc over here, getting ready to engage those tactical Space Marines, and they're just not gonna be able to deal with that right now. Bambi Lambi realizes he's outgunned. I think he's spotted those Banshees coming in, so he's just deciding to fall back to a safer position behind some cover where he can't be flanked by this archway here. It looks like Bigamo got kind of outgunned as well. Got pushed back here by two squads of Banshees. Lindo and Keltos both pushing the center. No one's even bothering to mess with poor lonely Twilily over here. He is going to get a decap on their natural power, which is nice, but the blue team does have this central power up already. And uh, it looks like they're going to be able to push this resource lane as well. So whereas Red Team was able to take the top lane uncontested, both of the Eldar players for the blue team doubled up in the center lane and managed to push back both of the Space Marine players. And uh, if they don't get out here soon, it's going to cost the Red Team a full power farm as the Banshees start hacking away at the power node. And here comes the Bile Spewer for the Plague Champion. That's going to make pretty much guarantee that this farm is going down because that's kind of a flamer based weapon right here. It does an AoE attack of course and you can see it just melting away those generators. 
And then Donan doing a good job of stalling out the rest of Bigamo's forces over here with that Farseer while the Banshees and Plague Champion finished up their work. And there goes the entire farm. Plague Champ's going to try to get the decap. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to hold on to that. He does fall back. In the meantime, we've got double Sentinels up here for Twilily. Two walking, stomping, shooting robots. Not really robots. They're vehicles. They have drivers. They're not self man but they've gone ahead and eliminated already this central power node, destroyed the power node and the generator itself already. And if you noticed, uh, one of the one of the major changes for Imperial Guard uh, in the Kaltos mod is this ground pound ability right here. Uh, the Sentinel no longer comes with a stomp ability. You have to upgrade that. I believe it calls about 50, 50 requisition and 10 power but I believe the Sentinel itself has been reduced in cost just a little bit here. So it looks like Bigamo and Bambi Lambi getting back out, pushing back into the game here. 451 to 451, actually locked up completely even right now. Twilight Lee has to send one of his Guardsman squads back, kind of got caught out of position between a lot of range fire between these two Chaos Marine squads. Some Rangers on the field. For Mr. Lindonan, you can see he's got one of everything in the Tier 1. I love to see that Eldar build. Always lots of variety and possibilities when you have one of each of the Eldar Tier 1 squads on the field. And it looks like Blue Team's kind of just hanging out in the center, kind of all together here. Guardian's setting up some cover, trying to lock down this central point here. Lindonan getting a little careless with those Guardians. Just narrowly evaded a stomp from that Sentinel. And now lots of fire pouring in to this squad of Chaos Space Marines. Force Commander's coming in, but he's very low health, trying to run around that green cover and approach those Banshees, but didn't quite pull it off. But with these two Sentinels firing in, even with that energy shield, it looks like one of them's gonna go up and try to knock that over. Gonna have to be very careful, though, approaching all of this range fire. Banshee's getting a bit too brazen in the middle of all that. Oh man, they might actually go down. They paused and hesitated for a second. Lots of fire going down, and the last member drops. Chaos Raptors on the field. This is another new unit of the Kaltos Elite mod. These are kind of like Assault Space Marines if you're unfamiliar with them. They don't knock down when they land though. They uh, they suppress anything they land near for three seconds. Scouts just narrowly escape and that would have been a costly loss for Bigmo. You never want to lose sniper scouts at all, let alone this early in the game. They managed to tag two of those sniper scouts, lost one of their own models. These Chaos Raptors are a little less bulky than the Assault Space Marines, but their damage output is about 10 higher. I believe they do something like 35 DPS as opposed to the Assault Space Marines, I think 26 or 27. A Ranger Shot almost finishing off that Sentinel right there as Twilight Lee just narrowly keeps that in the game. And now the red team has control of both of the center VPs, pushed the blue team completely off. The blue team's still sitting on a lot of resources, though. They've got this contested power farm completely built, which is a bit brazen if the red team manages to take that back. But the plague champion's just been running around down here. You can see still trying to evade that force commander and get some extra shots with that bile spewer and finish off that generator. Doing some excellent resource harassment down there from the blue team for Mr. Carnivore. Oh, and also, I guess I failed to mention, in case you don't recognize this icon down here, the uh, Guardian Squad is no longer a Guardian Squad, it's a Dire Avenger Squad, which uh, I believe is a bit more a bit more lore accurate and fluff accurate, I believe, and the Guardians have been assigned to just a Guardian Weapon Team, and this Guardian Weapon Team can now upgrade to the Bright Lance. The Bright Lance is no longer a different squad, it can upgrade just like all the other setup teams for the other races. So the whole blue team now is heading into tier 3. Bigamo's got his double snipers up here trying to pick off some Chaos Space Marines. These attacks really need to be in green cover though. They're just out in the open taking lots of fire from both the Warlock and two squads of Chaos Space Marines. They're going to have to fall back from that of course. Perhaps if they had been in that green cover instead of kind of hanging out here in the middle they would have been able to stall out a little bit longer. At least force the Warlock to come out and engage with his melee weapons there. So that's, here. here's exactly what I was mentioning. The red team's just gonna be able to push up and take this power that the blue team has built. Hopefully they can get that back relatively quickly. 
VP still pretty much evened up. And uh, we can see Lindonan very well locked down over here, trying to stall out and uh, keep these Sentinels back. Those Rangers constantly pouring a couple shots into these Sentinels and keeping them from wanting to approach, especially with these three energy shields up offering perfect cover. <laughs> There's Twilight actually mentioning that he doesn't appreciate how easy it is for Eldar to set up their cover and how difficult and normally ineffective it is for the Imperial Guard cover to get set up. So Lord General taking a lot of fire. Twyler leaves Tier 2 and bringing a Chimera onto the field. That'll make him able to push this position pretty easily once he gets that vehicle out here. Let's see what's going on down bottom on the west side of the map. We can see, oh man, lots of melee on the field. Leg Champion with his Leg Sword now, Sword of Undeath, using that Assault Marine to jump in and finish off the last member of that Assault Marine squad for Bambi Lambie. Wow, what a nice play over there. You can see the Raptors were over here stalling around. <laughs> An Assault Marine turns the bits in midair. That was one of the Zombie Marines right there from that Sword of Undeath. Against Space Marine, that thing is extremely effective. Uh, does power melee damage, and uh, I don't know if it's still the case, but I do remember that a while ago, uh, the Sword of Undeath ignored melee resistance, which makes it extremely much more powerful than you would expect against squads like Tactical Marines and Assault Marines. So man, you can just see Plague Champion just getting in the middle of all this melee right now, getting knocked around by the Apothecary, who's got a, just a full squad, uh, sorry, a full loadout right now. Sanguine Chainsword, Armor of Purity, and Purification Rights. Trying to stall out right now. Here comes another new squad. This is an Eldar Dark Reaper squad. You can see they're on the field right now with their little rocket projectile launchers right there doing plasma damage from the entire squad, I believe. So going to, again, be very effective against Space Marines. Scout's kind of ducking behind this wall here to get out of the firing line of those tactical Space Marines. And let's see what's going on up top. Twilight Lee looks like he's getting pushed back pretty hard. Lost both of his Sentinels somewhere in all this. And oh no, a Haywire Grenade going down on that Chimera. A bit out of position right now. Grenade going down from the Guardian Squad, or the Dire Avenger Squad, rather. And oh man, we're seeing a new ability, actually, from the Farseer. That's the rune armor right there, causing the Psychic Storm, I believe it's called, which is a big kind of area of effect spell, uh, similar to Psy Storm, uh, if you, you know, from from High Templar, if you're familiar with StarCraft, I believe it's that same general kind of feel. So very effective against uh, those low HP, high model count squads. And oh man, is this two squads? Two squads of Dark Reapers. You can see those on the field for Kaltos. Kaltos kind of lost a lot of his Tier 1 stuff. but coming out swinging in Tier 2 with two squads of Dark Reapers. They are very frail, very glass cannon type units as far as I can tell. And we're going to have Bigamo bringing a whirlwind support vehicle. That's an artillery vehicle for the Space Marines on the field right now. Here it comes, and we'll be able to get to see this new elite mod unit in action here momentarily. Has a very long range, doesn't do a lot of damage, but a very disruptive unit, without question. You can see Mark of Siege coming down on these Chaos Space Marines right here. And there goes the first volley. Look at those rockets knocking troops all over the place really interferes with uh, any sort of melee and ranged fire. Kind of just disrupts and prevents any incoming DPS. Apothecary getting lots of heals from that Sanguine Chainsword, but not quite being able to tank all that damage. Plague Champion trying to get some extra zombie Space Marines on his side over here. Meanwhile, Raptors jumping in and landing on top of those Scout Snipers. Looks like they're going to just be able to barely get out of there. This tactical Space Marine squad risked it all to take down that Plague Champ, but they're going to be in a bit of a precarious spot right now if those Raptors get any swings on them right here. They do have their aspiring champion on the field, took down all but one, and a point-blank barrage from that whirlwind completely denies them any chance to further cause damage to those tactical Marines. Force Commander charging up, Bambi Lambi coming in, swinging, now with the Teleporter Pack and the Thunder Hammer on his side. 
and that's just gonna force everything of Carnivore right off the field. Up top we've got a strong, strong Eldar push. Everything coming over here, both Lindonan and Kaltos pushing together. You can see a creeping barrage coming up, blasting both the Warlock, or sorry, the Farseer and that Guardian Weapons team right out of there. And in the meantime, the red natural power farm up top's gonna fall. So it looks like a lot of Kaltos' uh, squads had to fall back, or maybe those were, nope, that was Lindonan's Warp Spider squads. I wasn't sure if that was the Dark Reapers or not. Quite, haven't quite got used to identifying the different, uh, different newer squads here. And a Falcon on the field as well for Mr. Kaltos. Gonna be giving him a lot more field presence. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we're having kind of reverse gen bashes here from both sides. Although the red team does need to try to get out there and grab some of those VPs. They're about 100 VPs down. It's 350 to 250 right now. Raptors jumping in, causing some pretty solid damage to those tactical space marines, but now pretty well outgunned. These, uh, these plague marines up here need to get down there and start putting some pressure on that artillery unit. I don't know why they're hanging back so much. Force Commander teleports right into the thick of everything and starts swinging that thunder hammer around. He is suppressed, so he's kind of running around trying to get some hits on things, but taking a lot of damage in the meantime. Scouts miss their grenade toss, don't really hit anything there. Librarian has to fall back, and the Force Commander's getting out of there as well. Looks like everything's going to have to fall back here. Force Commander's trying to just narrowly escape here. Pack Marines tanking away. And uh-oh, looks like we've got at least one heavy turret coming down here to try to keep that Falcon back. And we have another Whirlwind. We've got a Whirlwind on the field for both Space Marine players. Uh, the Whirlwind, I think, will be very effective, especially against Eldar, who uh, try to use their range and setup the teams uh, to their advantage very much in kind of this Tier 2 versus Space Marine setup. Plasma Dev setting up in the back here. It might be able to get a nice shot on top of... Uh, on top of this Dark Reaper squad, there it goes, annihilating some members right there. Psychic Storm going off in the center, causing some damage on top of that VP. Plasma Dev doing some good work so far. Uh, the second Whirlwind now up here, or maybe that's the same one, it just repositioned. And it looks like Kaltos and Lindonan are going to have to fall back right now. Or sorry, not Kaltos and Lindonan, sorry. Twilight and Bigamo, I got my sides mixed up right there. Nice use of the healing runes right there. Spirit stones healing up those banshees and warp spiders at the critical moment, allowing them to continue pursuing that chimera and take it out of the game. Oh, banshees take a brutal hit from a plasma devastator though, and they're gonna be hard pressed to get out of there uh, and keep that squad alive. Exarch's leading out of there if that Exarch escapes. Oh no, she goes down. One Banshee left with just a little bit, oh no, and just as the Executioner cannon upgrades on that turret, they obliterate that Banshee squad. So Plague Champion up here, taking a bit too much damage, has a couple zombie tactical marines on his side though. That tax squad just barely escaping with 40 HP on that sergeant. can see those Dark Reapers uh, doing some pretty excellent anti-infantry damage. Twilight has been losing a lot though. He's, uh, he's down to just his two Guardian squad, or sorry, Guardsman squads, now pulling a Manticore onto the field and just gonna try to add some artillery support to the battle with Bigamo and Bambi really bringing the heavy hitters to the field. Oh man, look at that smite! Just obliterate those Dark Reapers. They do such great damage, but they are just so very frail. They're they're essentially just as frail as war spiders, but they don't have the advantage of being able to teleport around and get into cover whenever they want to. Oh man, look at the warlock catching that force commander as he retreats with that merciless witchblade and taking him right to the ground. So Space Marines kind of just blobbed up in the center here, as, as you would expect from an Apothecary player. We've got three squads attacks, two Whirlwind vehicles, or actually, no, this is a Razorback over here. And, uh, oh man, look at that Librarian taking way too much damage. Got a little brazen trying to go in for the smite, 
but against two of those Dark Reaper squads and a War Spires and a Falcon, I mean, he just got pretty much disintegrated as soon as he turned around that corner. Channeling runes being used by the Warlock, you don't see that very often, but it's very effective. Oh, and the Cloak of Shadows, how about that? Two very underused war gears for the Warlock. Open wide, the abyss of chaos. Keeping that Falcon under the guard of Shadow right now. So your opponents would just think a Warlock's rolling in and surprise, Falcon full of everything. And oh man, looks like I missed a Chaos Abyss up here. Twilight retreating with what little he has at left. Looks like he lost one of his Guardsmen squads and uh, the second one retreated with about half its members and a Commissar down there. So man, victory points uh, really not taking a swing in either player's favor. The red team's bringing it right back, only down by about 40 VPs right now, closing that gap. Got an Eldar Webway gate up top trying to kind of help with the mobility of the armies here. The Seer Council, oh man, taking a direct hit from that Plasma Devastator, and that actually hit the Librarian too, but may have bought him just enough time to get out of there. And that Whirlwind just constantly knocking troops around, knocking them into range of the Executioner Cannon on this heavy turret. I believe the uh, range of the Executioner Cannon was increased a little bit because I believe it was supposedly a slightly shorter range. But uh, I may be imagining that. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Kalepost. Do not lose us that power. And man, just everything going crazy right now. 223 to 210. Looks like Kalto's gonna try to get in another little gen bash right here, and actually, I don't know if he sees that Razorback, probably not, but if he sees that Razorback, he could force that Razorback off the field as well with uh, those two Dark Reaper squads and the Falcon. Man, but look at that power just disintegrate right here. These Dark Reapers do not mess around. And that's gonna be another set of power down for the red team. Blue team's all in tier 3, red team only has Mr. Bambi in tier 3, and Carnivore's bringing a great unclean one to the game right now. So using that Merciless Wishblade to knock that Force Commander around, everything's going to get out and unload on him. That's an excellent combination. The, the crazy burst DPS of those Dark Reapers combined with the knockdown effect on that Merciless Wishblade. Uh, that Force Commander just barely got out of there. And you can see... Keltos uh, doing an excellent job of microing in and out of that Falcon to really try to maximize the DPS of those squads. So Plasma Dev once again, I've been seeing those Plasma Devs set up on these stairs can really just kind of turn around from that position and either guard the middle or the top lane on his own right there. Falcon in a bit of trouble. Uh, need to get those Dire Avengers in there to repair that while he has the chance before that gets too much more beat up. I don't think uh, it has the shield quite yet. He needs to get that shield upgraded though. It's a level 3 Falcon. If you can upgrade that shield, you can make it nigh on indestructible at this point in the game. Twilight now purchasing a second Mandacore. Really going to try to just hang back and surprise, su provide fire support for the two Space Marine armies here while they take the front line. Oh, a nice looking grenade from those Guardians. That Razorback getting very low. Oh no, and there it goes. I believe that was Bigamo's Razorback. He didn't quite keep an eye on it. Manticore strike over here on top of this Falcon. He actually just kept the Falcon still and it managed to, uh, to evade most of those rocket strikes. The infantry took a lot of help and oh man, there goes an Eldritch Storm right in the middle of the Space Marine Army. Doesn't look like it outright killed any squads, but did some pretty heavy damage to quite a few of them. Guo is now on the field, leading the charge up here. Falcon very low on health. Needs to be very careful with that Falcon. Shield's coming up though, so that's going to effectively fill its health bar right back up and give it plenty of time to stay on the field. These... Here comes another Manticore strike right here. Doesn't really hit anything though, it looks like. And the red team's just gonna need to get something on the field to really help deal with this great and green one. They've invested a lot in these uh in these whirlwind support vehicles, but those don't really do anything to it go. He kinda just ignores that and walks on up. 
the stored field going down on it, those dark reapers, but you can see they're still just taking quite a bit of damage from all that fire. Had to fall back 75 to 210 in favor of the red team. Red teams looks like they might actually be able to lock us down. These three turrets up top just brutal. There's two executioner cannons and a normal cannon, so really infantry or vehicles have not much of a chance up there unless they can get some solid AB to take out those turrets. So man, I'm not sure what Bambi's intending to do with these space marines. I guess he was just trying to get sight on that D cannon so he could teleport in right over there with his force commander. And it looks like we've got some sort of call in over here. Assault Terminator's coming in from Bambi Lambi. That force commander taking tons of fire though and gets knocked right to the ground by those two Dark Reaper squads once again. Now we can see over here, these Chaos Raptors have been upgraded with, uh, with Melta rifles now. In tier three, they have the option to upgrade from their melee to ranged weapons. Those Meltas, of course, do maximum damage to all armor types. Vehicles and the infantry the same. Oh man, nice shot by that Plasma Devastator annihilating that Falcon and then allowing the Manticore to clean up the mess of any of those squads that were coming out of it. So perfect timing with that. Salt Terminator is getting out with all three members despite being very low. And we've got a Laz Cannon in the back now been causing some damage to that great unclean one over there. So it looks like those three turrets got annihilated by the Farseer and her Seer Council up there, and there's of course a D Cannon as well. Kalto's still pretty light now, uh, only has himself a D Cannon and those two Dark Reaper squads, and they're really not going to have too much field presence late game uh, without the ability to reinforce right there. Here comes a nice looking Singularity, it's going to fall right on top of that Plasma Devastator but it has to retreat as soon as it fires because the Manticore Strike comes down right there on top of it. So grenades going down on the Tactical Marines. But it didn't stop them at all. They're finally falling back after getting the decap, trying to stop that lead at least. Meanwhile, we have a Chaos Shrine of Nurgle up here, allowing the Chaos members to, of course, heal up and reinforce from that position when it has worship. So kind of a little forward base there. Oh man, but that Plague Champion getting annihilated by all of those Assault Terminators right there. Oh man, and here comes an Orbital Bombardment. This has been changed as well. You can see the fire radius of that is much larger. You can see these three beams kind of hitting everywhere, and it does hurt a lot more now, so we're going to see a lot of these squads turn into bits in just a second. Oh man! Unfortunately for Bambi, it did take out his Assault Terminators, but uh, it obliterated that shrine, some of those squads as well. It looks like just the Aspiring Champion escaped with 11 health on that... Uh, on that heretic squad. And man, just artillery strikes happening everywhere. Those two manticores really paying off. Twilight now with two stormtrooper squads. And you can see now uh, with the assault kit, they do also get their frag grenade back like they used to way back when they first entered the game. Avatar on the field over here for Mr. Lynn Donan stomping around, causing some trouble. Those scouts are not getting out of there. Looks like that's the last of Big Mo's scout snipers. We do have a sniper rifle, however, on Twilight's Lord General. And these stormtrooper squads doing some excellent work. Unfortunately, that D cannon did obliterate one of them. There's really just too much action in this three on three game to keep up with all of it. Oh man, a nice looking, that plasma that's just been hitting home on all of its shots so far this game. Thirty-eight to one twenty-three. Lots of stuff going down here in the center. That plague champion being a little brazen, very low health, but trying to engage those tactical space marines. If that librarian, oh man, look at the librarian get obliterated by that great unclean one's vile vomit right there, turned into bits. And and that's just one of my favorite things. I love seeing things turn to bits. Oh man, Manticore strikes, whirlwind strikes. That great.
Great Unclean One's taking some fire from that last cannon still. Oh, and it looks like we've either got another Creeping Barrage or a Rocket Run. Yeah, that's a Creeping Barrage. Knocking all the units right into the range of the Plasma Devs and Whirlwind everything back here. That Great Unclean One needs to be very careful. It's getting very low on health. Looks like we've got an Altar dropping right in the middle of all this madness and a Play Cloud as well. Guardian's going to be in lots of trouble if they can't get out and retreat from that. Space Marines also realizing they're a bit outgunned there with the Farseer and her Seer Council closing in on them and forcing them off the field. So late game, this is just such a pain to deal with. You have that Farseer on the field with Time Field, Spirit Stones, and everything. Just kind of engaging everything in melee. Takes out the Lord General right there. Here comes another Manticore Strike. D Cannons in the back, firing on all of the Red Team's stuff over here. Those two Manticores need to be very careful with that Altark moving in with their Fusion Cannon. If these two Manticores go down, it's going to be a big blow to the Red Team. They've really been using that to kind of hold on to the map control at this point. A point-blank Rocket Barrage. One of the Manticores goes down, but the Fusion Cannon of the Altark is still firing on the other one, and there it goes out of control. Oh no, that leaves Twilight with not very much left. He has lost both of the Stormtrooper squads. And this Manticore charging way up there, finally exploding. And it looks like the blue team with 38 points might just turn this around. Oh man, the whirlwind goes down as well. That Altar came onto the field, equipped her fusion rifle right away, and came in and obliterated three vehicles. So, I mean, obviously worth her cost. Big turnaround by the red team. You can see, uh, oh man, we have another Eldritch Storm blasting down over here. But if you see this blue circle around uh, Eunice by the base, that's another big change for the Kaltos mod. Uh, he actually has a little aura around your outpost now that reduces all incoming damage by 50%. Kind of to eliminate some of that cheese play like we just saw. Dropping a storm or a nuke right in the middle of your base will kind of prevent any of your squads from going down to something like that. 38 to 25. It looks like the blue team has a solid control of the map right here. That was their final push and they did it well because... Uh, the red team's just struggling to get their natural point here, and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Here comes another Singularity coming down right in the middle here, picking up everything, and oh man, bits in the center. Not much left, and wow, I actually, that's the game right there. Blue team takes it out, and uh, that's our first Keltos mod game. Hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. We saw a little of everything. We saw those whirlwinds causing some Space Marine artillery fire. Lots of disruption around that. Those Dark Reapers made a huge difference. We saw Kaltos using them to great effect. Uh, fortunately, once it got late game without their Falcon, they weren't too able to stay in on the map as much as they would have liked. But uh, despite having a very nice tier two for the for the red team, the blue team just brought it right back, took the game 38 to 0. Stick around, folks. I will have more elite mod games soon enough. This is Red Rupee. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys next time.